It's that time once again where I invite you all to join me at the tabletop simulator table. So I can roll some dice and plead with Kron to let me have some good numbers on occasion. Let's continue our Kingdom Death campaign. <laughs> We're gonna be hunting the Gorm. Uh, I need to do one fix, uh, one, one obvious thing. We had 200 XP on Balthazar, and then I did Lucerne, or Lucerne. Three, so we gained three, and then I only gave him one. He's supposed to get two at the end of a hunt or a battle because of life exchange, which the Lion Knight did provide. <clears throat> Not the Lion God. Spoilers. Lion Knight. Yeah, we gained the hunt XP for that, so uh, we're adding that hunt XP. That is one thing that I had forgotten. Anyway, we have a group of people here. I can make them bigger. We have Baxter joining us again. I am going to hand Baxter the healing potion. I don't think I'm going to use it on them. But in case I feel like fixing a gaping chest wound or something, we'll see. Baxter, I don't really mind if they're uh, gimped, even if they have an extra speed. <clears throat> Maybe we can cure their blindness or something. Although the blindness could be useful with Acid Tooth Dagger later. Anyway, they're holding the Lion Knight badge. When we depart, we gain four now. Let me double check here. The survival limit went up one. We get to remove a negative token if we gain any. Okay, we're only gaining three. One, two, three. Still. So we're gaining three survival for departing. And then Baxter gains nothing else. Ninian over here. Gains three survival. Our limit is six now. And, uh... Let me give the stone nose over to there. We'll leave Ninian without the stone nose. Uh, we'll just hook up Baxter with lots of stuff. Actually, you know what? Never mind. She can have it. You never know what happens during the hunt. <coughs> Balthazar here. Gains three. And then I think caps out. We're going to take the mask still, even though we can't benefit from its ability. It's just two head armor. You know, makeshift completed Gorm armor set. And then Faust gains five, two for the rawhide boots and gloves, and then three for departing. So they are at six. Once more, we need to remember they're an axe specialist. Let's keep that in mind. And we're just gonna try to do the same thing we did last time before the White Lion Knight battle. We're going to slow farm a Gorm with our luck character here. We get them for well, one, two, three, four. Five more hunts if I don't use Lucerne again, but I feel like on the last one I will use a Lucerne just to try and crit something, maybe. Or crit a bunch of somethings, right? But I won't use Lucerne. What I would use is uh, this, Lucerne's Lantern. Because this can hit multiple, but we need a lot of blue to make it really worth it. Anyway, let's get ready to go out. I don't think there's anything else that I need. A two evasion over there. I can't really make use of guard for free or at all because I don't have a red. Still, we're missing a lot of stuff. Who's first? Teal? Is it teal? Uh, let's load in the gorm. Something is blocking a setup. What is blocking set up? Hunt. Clean up hunt. Hunt. Gorm. 
Well, I haven't put anything in the setup and I don't see it highlighting anything, so now I'm thinking my script is just broken. Ah, apparently the deck. Okay. Well, we can delete the deck. You're supposed to take that deck away, man. There you go. Gotta make sure we keep our eyes peeled everywhere. Teal. White. Uh, purple. Brown. <clears throat> Maybe I'll change the colors up in the next campaign. We've been using these ones for the three seasons so far. Anyway. I think we're about ready to get started. Wasn't anything else I left behind, right? We can fight the Beast of Sorrow. I'm not going to fight him yet, but we'll probably hit him up at least once later. And then... Yeah, I think we're good. Let's just go hunt this Gorm real quick. I will say I probably won't do two hunts tonight. What's next on the timeline? Kingsman. Yeah, we're probably not going to fight Kingsman. We're just doing a Gorm. Morning Bull. You approach the fresh corpse of a Gorm. The survivors must choose to steer clear or go near. Ah. Uh... We don't want it to have an extra damage token, so we will just suffer the brain tax. It's a light injury. Three. 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 Uh, well, if I see Hiccup, you know what we're gonna do again. <laughs> Every time we do it, the game finds a way to kill my characters. Nothing happens for Steer Clear, right? It's just the damage. Flatter Earth. Survivors lose their quarry's trail in the field of stone faces so badly crushed by the passing of Gorm herds that nothing remains but a carpet of fine pebbles. Rid of D10. I don't think we've had this one before. The five. <clears throat> Distracted. Move the Gorm one space away from the survivors on the hunt board. Oh, we might have had this one before. Did we get the delay on it? No, I don't think so, actually. Okay, Gorm backed off one. Baxter. Random hunt event. Dice for the random hunt. A 33. Uh-oh, double number. Those are usually bad. The event revealer trips over a protruding nose in the ground. The lips of a stone face begin to move. The event revealer has no name. The lips stop moving and nothing else happens. Otherwise, the lips seductively whisper the survivor's name. If the event revealer is insane, they are drawn in and they start savagely kissing the face. This is purple. No. Yes. This is purple. Baxter is not insane. They're quite sane. They're actually hurting. Uh, so that stuff doesn't happen. If we're not insane, we gain plus one understanding. Feeling on the cusp of learning something. If any survivor has a marrow hunger impairment, they, the face secretly whispers their life's purpose. They gain plus one permanent strength and... Add the murder settlement event to the timeline next year. Thankfully, we don't have a marrow hunger loser. So we just gain one understanding. One purple. Good job, purple. Baxter. Alright, Ninny and the Dingle Hero of the Lantern. Let's see what happens to you. That's a 95... Grim and frostbitten. There's a dead stillness in the air. The atmosphere becomes thick with worry, and the survivors carry on nervously. A bitter, evil, <clears throat> evil cold sets in, and there is no shelter. Uh, we've had this one before. Unless the survivors armor gear each hit location, they lose quarry monster level survivor survival. So minus one, minus one. This doesn't count as armor. 
So, minus one for Balthazar. Alright. <clears throat> and then their fascinating hunt of new things and exciting possibilities comes to an end again as we just roll nothing but crap. <laughs> Let's fight the Gorman. Probably chop off its dick, make it do more damage, and then have the issue we had last time where he starts to hurt too much and I have to take him out early. Okay. I don't want timeline. Showdown. Legorm, level one. Having a nice peaceful play through this time around. I said I want to get further, and one way to do that is just stick with level one monsters for a while. <laughs> Until you're really prepared. Uh, we have debris. We'll put debris here. We'll put debris here. We're gonna have Baxter here because Baxter's gonna get hit first as Baxter has anxiety. They start with priority target token. And this toppled pillar can stay out of the way. That is seven spaces away from the monster. We'll do our usual setup. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, and six. Also, we want to hit once with the dagger, once with fist and teeth, and I guess we're working on grand weapon now, right? Yeah. And then once with the axe, so that's asking for a lot. I'm asking for four runes at least. Uh, which is going to kill our farming potential. Because Gorn doesn't heal on like a lion or something. <laughs> anyway. Let's get going. Give the decks a shuffle. Gorm is first as always. Thunderfoot is active. Let's try to remember that this is up here. Wallop. Priority target. Move and attack the target. Alright, we'll put this back. We'll take out two black dice here. Roll them up. I see a six, I see an eight. So let's uh take two hits. We did not dodge either of those. We have oh, I need to do on arrival bonuses real quick before we get into it, you know. I'm I'm already ready to go through the paces, but <clears throat> I should have gave him the stone nose. We all gain a strength token as red fist is a thing. Stone Nose, one Insanity, one Survival for Ninian. I don't think there's any on arrival bonuses for this person. And this person either. Alright. So yeah, while I pit twice, head to arms. Were those what it's rolled? I'm gonna roll them again because I don't remember if I rolled them or just moved them there. Head to arms. It was meant to be. Thank you, Kron, for doing that. We will dodge the head. Take one to the arms. <clears throat> and then, uh, question. Question everything. Alright, so, while up happened, we're gonna go Baxter first. We're going to fish in the debris. Pray for a basic resource wine that we never hit four to six we we only get bone blades and fucking <laughs> scrap swords not that i'm complaining about the scrap sword it's pretty nice but I'm gonna question everything <laughs> and he wants to go first uh faust can go later let's have balthazar just get the axe that's fast, right? Balthasar is teal. Ninian. Let's have Ninian hit with fist and teeth. If possible. Also, this person shouldn't be here. Ninian is plus two strength. 
Uh, we do not hit, I'm pretty sure we have no accuracy. So, that's fine. I'll surge, we'll go for the hit. I need an eight. Fist and tooth, we do get one hit, so here we go. Yeah, we failed the wound, which means no wretch happens. Okay, that's fine. We'll go with Balthazar next. Balthazar will... Actually, we'll go with Balthazar after. I should have gone with Faust first. Faust will scry the AI deck with Rawhide. Alright, we don't care about posturing piss. One, two, three, four. Whoops, I didn't mean to pick that up. Move over here. Yeah. No. You know what? If we get thrown up on, that's fine. We'll stay there so we can... Well, it's going to be posturing piss and it's going to be rear up, actually. If it's going to be rear up, yeah. Let's just... Let's, let's get in the grass. Let's pay attention to the cards we just saw, you know? Balthazar, if you would, swing the red blade grand weapon. Oh, there's one more thing I have to do. We missed. We get a tactics card, so at the start of a showdown, we have acquired trip formation. So once per showdown during our act, if we are directly in front of the monster and there are at least two survivors in its blind spot, you may spend action to trip the monster. If you do, the monster suffers knockback one away from you and is knocked down. Okay. So I think anyone can activate that. We can get a free knockdown on the monster. I missed. I don't think it's a good idea for me to rush doing damage. But I'll, I'll do it on this turn because we don't want him to piss. We want him to rear up. So I will surge here. We'll hopefully roll better. We do hit this time. It's a mammoth mandible. Survey says it's a four. Four will wound, but it will not be a critical wound, and it's not a failure. Alright, so it's one card gone. We have wounded with the red blade. And now we have rear up happening. So all Jason survivors are knocked down. This is back on top, plus 5 toughness for the Gorms, so they're at 13. Also, I've been forgetting this card. Then, in honor of that card, when Faust went, instead of going here, Faust was here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We would move here to get out of range of it. Uh, three goes three spaces out on the diagonal. So one, two, three. Yeah. So we would have gone here. This person did get hit by that though, and there's no avoiding it. So it's just knock back five and knock down. So one, two, three, four, five. That's fine. They would have suffered that, and then Ninian also would have been. She's already knocked down, but she would have suffered knock back five. Balthazar removed this card from the stack when they wounded, so they were fine. And now rear up happens, and now it's our turn. Let's try to pay attention to all the things. All the things. We must pay attention to all of the things. Alright. I will encourage our boy Balthazar. We'll keep our survival, thanks to Rawhide Armor. And then Balthazar will swing the Red Blade. 
And this again. So, we will simply move into the tall grass and let Rira finish playing out. Uh, we'll scry. Oh, I can't scry while that's on there. We will... Relax, I guess. Take a deep breath. I don't think trip formation is necessary to utilize here. I'll leave this on top of this character. Yeah, I think we just end the turn. So Gorm comes crashing down again. No one's adjacent, no megalophobia disorders. No severe injuries. Gorm ends this turn. Uh these two are standing up. Now we'll scry. So Faust will go first. We have Scratch and Backslap. I wouldn't mind getting rid of both of these. Especially Scratch. I'm going to have Faust move here. Surge. We keep our survival. We'll swing our axe with the surge. Okay, we hit once with the eight. Four does not hit, which is good because legendary lungs is a major concern when grinding this axe. All right, we hit twice. Okay, we got the trap card. Just fishing the trap card out for my buddy Balthazar here. One head damage. Most survivors are on the back two of them they're knocked down again they suffer one brain damage so this is a severe brain trauma for our Baxter and that is a nine we add plus two since we have except darkness society principle it's a new perspective you're knocked down and gain 1d10 insanity they gain five insanity New perspective is a pretty good one. Alright, so that happened. No harm, no foul. Just, you know, the game being the game on me again. Since he turned around, that's nice. Uh, we'll go Balthazar. We will swing the rib blade. That is a perfect hit. I don't think we can do anything with the perfect hit yet, but all we can do is make the Gorm lame if we actually roll a crit here. That's not a crit, but it is a wound, so he will perform a wretch. Our farming is going poorly. Also, I just want to make sure I didn't put a hit location in there. Alright, one, two, three, four, five. Faust is gonna get collided with. Gorm is gonna back up two spaces, spew vomit in front of him and the five by four grid as it does, and, and we know we know how Gorm works by now, right? <sighs> I don't feel like picking up anybody else, so Balthazar is in the grass, just tank the next hit. All right, back slap. Closest threat facing in range, nobody. Closest threat field of view. Balthazar turns around. Rolls one dice, hits on four. I'll check evasion in a moment. Well, that's gonna hit no matter what. We have no evasion. On the waist. So one damage, knock back five. On the waist. And he turns to face me, right? And then that ends the turn. These three get back up. We will have... Uh... Faust go f first, I suppose. And we will strike from here. Actually, we'll strike from here, so I'm next to it. We'll swing the axe. 
Let's see if we can get our proficiency level. Good. I want to miss. We've got legendary lungs. Again, I don't think it's optional, right? Yeah, I don't think it's optional. It just says once per attack. Good, we missed. So two more hits. I don't want to brutally kill the guy. Unless we're going to roll some nines here. You know, we can crit on nine too. We're just as capable of critting on a nine. It's no seven, but... Still. Critical wound. We gain one stout kidney. Alright, we'll get it in a second. And a failure. Face the opposite board edge. No jiggling lord for me. That's unfortunate. But we do have a wound dealt. That is the third wound, right? And we have a stout kidney. Which, you know, I'm not opposed to. We need to thin this deck as much as possible. Took the kidney right out of their gut. Alright, so Faust doesn't need to attack anymore. Balthazar will move into the tall grass and hide in it with the active ability of the grass. And then these guys... One, two, three, four, five. He usually attacks the nearest, so we'll just move back in. I think that solves it for everybody. Okay. What are you doing, Gorm? Latin. Random survivor in blind spot. Nobody. Closest survivor in field of view and range. That's air boy Faust. Move and attack target. Turn the Gorm so the target is in the monster's blind spot. So he's just going to sit on us. This is five dice, hits on twos. Alright, during the uh, flow, we will surge. Wait, I don't have the shield, right? Never mind, I was going to surge to block it. I'm not going to attack him. <clears throat> We're just going to have to take this like a, a champion that we are. Gets knocked down after this, huh? All right, Gorm. We have two evasion, three evasion, two evasion, two evasion. So these hit on fours. I was expecting all of them to hit, but four of them is just as annoying. All right, arm, leg, head, waist. We will dodge the head. Roll for Rawhide. We lose the survival. We're taking two to the arms, legs, and the waist. This is okay. And then we're suffering Bash and Knockback 5. And the Gorm is knocked down. When this gets rolled over, I will definitely pay attention to... Making sure we get rid of that card. Alright, it's our turn. Since it is our turn to go and the Gorm is knocked down, his reactions are cancelled. Let's have Baxter come in. We're gonna swing the Acid Teeth Dagger. We have our accuracy. So we hit on threes because it's knocked down, right? We hit on threes. That's two hits. Alright, super dense death blow. Uh, we'll just roll them in this order. Alright, five, six, seven. Not enough to wound, we need a six. Because this is only for fist and teeth attacks, yeah. Whoa. <clears throat> that lag though. I guess we'll take the two. So we fail to cause any damage whatsoever. 
I will have Ninny and the Dingle Hero attempt to wound with fists and teeth. So seven hits. We are attacking from the flank. So this is a plus two to wound. We do roll an eight. We do not have a luck, right? No. Oh yeah, I forgot. She can stand up at the start of the monster's turn or our turn. Period. <clears throat> uh We do cause a wound. No critical benefit. That is fists and teeth there, so I just need to wound once with the dagger. I suppose since the monster's knocked down, I'll waste a surge here and then Baxter can just stay far away. We'll attempt to cause the wound now. We have two hits. And before a trap. Yep, there's a trap. Alright, Baxter. Monster got back up. He's just kidding. Taking a hit on the head. Most survivors are up top. So, knock down, knock down. Do we have the stalwart boy? They died, right? Or I'm not using them. I don't know who has stalwart anymore. Uh, brown and teal. Teal's light on the brain. Take a brain damage. Tall grass effect is still in play, though. Okay. Well, now that, that happened, I think that's it because everyone else is knocked down. Although, Ninian can get up at the start of the monster turn, and I think I will do that. I will get up at the start of the monster turn. And then I will. You know what? We'll just stay knocked down. Nah, I don't want Baxter to get hit. We'll, we'll get up. We'll get up to be the threat. So that we can take the hit here. Ow! It's Hiccup. Furthest survivor in range is White. It is not White's turn, though. Uh, speaking of which, we dodged last turn. It is White's turn, so White gains an insanity. Well, now we want to farm Hiccup. He's against the back wall, has to slide in the direction. I'll choose this way. Only Ninian gets hit by this, and Ninian will suffer one damage to the legs, ignoring armor, of which she has none. And then this goes back on top of the AI deck. And then we get up. Oh, there we go. Uh, you guys have seen me abuse Hiccup numerous times. We're gonna just uh, position ourselves to abuse it again, right? So we'll have Faust go first. Move. If he goes one, two, Faust actually gets hit. Faust will move here for now. Everyone else. Needs to move one, two, three, four. Yeah, out of range. So we'll just move like so. We'll end the turn. Next turn. Uh, hiccup happens. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is a tie. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's the furthest, so no, no gains yet, but we'll have him slide along the wall that way. And then do his throw up. Next turn. Uh, we'll leave Faust here. We're not going to grind fast. These three are going to alternate between who is the furthest by simply like stepping. This person will step up and in for right now, for example. And then Brown would need to get further away. Move five like that. They're just going to rotate each turn. They're going to dance around each other and this Gorm is gonna go left and right like that so starting from brown with white never being the furthest because of where they are and he is out of range we are five tiles out and this is a four tile move you know just to double check 
gonna gain all the insanity on the others. Each time they're targeted. I play with my food. I'm gonna make everybody insane. And if we hit the feet result, we can laugh about it later. 10 to 1, they just will obtain clarity in a minute as Kron is like, oh Jesus Christ. To be fair, Kron, though, Hiccup, I, I'm pretty sure there's two copies of Hiccup. So it's almost guaranteed to be in the, uh, the deck. You, you should stop denying me the sanity boon. <laughs> just let us have the sanity boon. Right, don't kill our characters. Don't take them away. Just let us play with the high insanity. You know what? Give us immortal. Make it even better. Because immortal would be one way of beating to brute force the uh, the guy. Unfortunately, I don't think there's a way to farm disorders on this guy, unlike the screaming antelope. Screaming antelope, you can get hit by his trap card, but. This guy, I don't think you can farm disorder. Anyway, when it gets back to brown, uh, so teal will gain one less, right? When it gets back to brown, we'll stop pussyfooting around, but we do need to spend one more turn. Uh, who doesn't need to partake? Only, only purple needs to get hit, right? And it might kill him, but... We'll have Baxter there, and then Teal here. No, we'll have Teal, we'll have Baxter here and Teal here. Ninian will go in the grass and use the grass effect. And twiddle her thumbs. She's done her job. I have to remember, I can spend the strength token to uh do a dodge if i need it but i want that strength to cause a wound at the moment we have how much hp left five six seven all right so next turn uh the furthest survivor one two three four five six is brown two three four five all right it's tied between brown and teal so we can just choose teal, I guess, and give them one. We're in sanity. Gorm goes here. Gorm throws up in the 5x4. Uh, then it's our turn. We'll have Baxter go first. We'll attack. Can't do trip formation like this, Gorm. You're always throwing up against the wall like a goober. Alright, 7 plus. That's there. We have two hits. If he runs along the board edge, he's gonna slide along the board edge. So we'll strike this first to max our odds of causing a fatal blow. We do wound, no critical wound, sadly. So hiccups is gone, and the second location. We do wound. Six and two is eight. Alright, so everyone gets their weapon XP at the end. We'll have white go. Thunderfoot. Flatten. That's what we're afraid of. We'll put flatten on top. Uh, if I have to, I will go out of my way to kill this thing. In fact, we'll have white move next to it just in case I need to surge with white. Balthazar will go first, though. We'll hopefully not hit a wretch. Although, wretch, wretch will hit two people. Unless I have it go this way, then it hits purple. Red blade. We missed. We'll surge. I'll spend it in a moment. Alright, now we hit. Can we get a critical hit? Although there's no resource here. Minus one movement token for the monster. Alright, looking good so far. No failure effect. 
Uh, Rampage should be gone. We'll just let the monster go then. And Thunderfoot happens. Draw AI. Wallop. Closest threat in field of view in range. Three way tie. We can choose Fouls. There's still probably the tankiest, especially for this. So we will choose Faust. Two dice hits on fours. Yeah, we use these two. They're both on tens, so obviously they'll land. Yeah, they'll land low. <laughs> that's, that's how it works, right? God forbid you roll tens multiple times in a row. Okay, he missed. He missed the wallop. So it is our turn. We'll have Baxter just run away. They stab with the dagger. They're feeling good. We'll have Faust move. Uh, one, two, three, four over here. We'll scry. All right, so rear up is next. I should allow rear up to happen so that I can farm a critical hit since a 13 right we have one strength so we're on six uh six and six is 12 so seven and seven is our crit yeah i'd have to crit in order to wound thanks to your luck so we will just walk back and next turn gorn will rear up so that's on top oh shit okay this is only knockback five right one, two, three, four, five. We'll just end Balthazar's turn here. Uh, she had to move out of the grass to knock and knock back. One, two, three. She actually has to move here. I'm going to say that I moved her here so she's still in range. Balthazar will end his turn here and then get knocked back like so because of Thunderfoot. And then if we were up happens, it's our turn. We'll have Balthazar... Hey, you know what? If I don't hit this crit... I can't get rid of this card. Hmm. I think I have to get Thunderfoot out of the deck first. No! If I don't get the crit, I get knocked back. Fuck, we're invincible, man. We're invincible. If we get the crit, the card's gone. <laughs> if we don't get the crit, which we did not hit that. Uh, I guess I'll use my last surge here. Okay, we hit now. Why can't I hit on the first try? We need a seven. We only got a four, so we get knocked back five from Thunderfoot at the end of our turn. We fail the wound, which doesn't cause a wretch, and then... We'll just end our turn. Rear up happens. No one's adjacent. Uh, Balthazar will go in. Swing his sword. He missed again. We end our turn. Well, he ends his turn. Who wants to... Uh... We'll move Faust up so that they are the closest threat. Oh, I can't do that because Thunderfoot. What's your range? It's up to here. Alright, we'll, we'll do this. Three, one, two, three, four. That should be okay. We'll do that. So next turn, Gorm. He either rears up. Alright, he's rearing up. So that's good. Balthazar, <laughs> do you think? Just fucking roll better, man. He missed. He gets knocked back five. We end their turn. <laughs> Next turn. This happens. Uh, Balthazar comes up. Swings his sword. He misses. He gets knocked back five. I'm going to scry the AI deck. There's a wallop. <clears throat> we'll just play it patient. Closest threat and field of view in range. The only thing that sucks is Thunderfoot keeps me out of the tall grass. 
But I can handle a wallop, and then we'll have to move everybody on the next turn. So next turn, a uh, wallop is happening. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Should be white. Closest threat. In the field of view and range. Yep, and that's the first one. I see the second thing is random survivor. That would put a wrench in my plans. Tron, let me farm this Gorm. Why are we rolling ones and threes to hit? Hey, he hits on fours, two hits for the Gorm. Head and waist, I will dodge the head. See if we get that survival back with Rawhide. We do not. And we will take one on the waist. So it's our turn now. What I will do... Uh, first we're gonna have Baxter hop over the pillar with the pillar special ability. And then we'll have Faust go... We'll have Faust go after. One, two, three, four, five. We'll have Balthazar go. Swing the rib blade. I question everything. Seriously, it's just four, three, one, four, three, one, four, three, one. I can't scry the deck. We will move. One, two, three, four, five. No, that's in range. We have to go up here to not get the knockback effect. Brown. How healthy are you, Brown? They won't die to a wallop, so. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. We'll have Brown move. Yeah, Brown can just stay here. That's fine. Let them take the next hit. Next turn. This is Brown's turn. Alright, rear up happens. Our turn. Balthazar runs in. He swings his blade. He misses. We need a six. We have no accuracy. Good Christ, man. I guess I should get into the blind spot. <laughs> we need all the help we can get, clearly. Uh, everyone stay still. Rear up happens. On the next turn. Balthazar runs in. <laughs> he's just... I imagine it's like an old... Like, kung fu film where he's just like, ah, Gets knocked away and then he gets up undeterred and is ah, <laughs> Swinging his weapon in the air. Just constantly running in. Alright, we got a 10. We hit. Can we roll a wound just to get rid of Wallop? Thank fuck, we got a critical wound. Persistent injury draw paralysis doesn't even matter, but Wretch doesn't happen. And there's no more Wallop. And then Thunderfoot is down here. This is fine. We end our turn. Alright, we're up as first. That's good. We want we're up to be first. So Balthazar is knocked down. Alright, during our turn, we will encourage Balthazar to stand. We lose our survival. Please stop. Please stop with these low rolls. We will attack first. We missed. We'll move here. We'll end our turn. Uh, rear up happens. The Gorm is done. Balthazar will get into the blind spot now. Swing the red blade. Oh my fucking god, why can I not hit this thing? If he puts this up here, that's fine. It'll come down one more time, so we might be able to benefit from it. 
and he's just gonna draw a rear up. So we're in their turn, and then Thunderfoot happens, he draws AI, he draws rear up, so he knocks Balthazar down, and then it's our turn, and we pick Balthazar up with the rawhide person, and we lose a survival, and Balthazar swings his sword. Five hits in the blind spot! Holy shit! We're not attacking from the flank. We just need a seven or better. That's not a seven or better. We have failed. Uh, because of Thunderfoot, we get knocked away if I just end my turn there. So, that's okay. And then it's the next turn. And now we can infinitely do this. So rear up happens. It's in the discard. Balthazar goes to the blind spot. Attempts to swing. Ron said, fuck you. I said, okay. We end the turn. Rear up happens. Balthazar's knocked down. <laughs> Actually, maybe I should always wait until rear up. Nah, I can't wait. We have to try, right? Right, Faust encourages. We keep our survival this time. Balthazar swings his sword. A five hits in the blind spot. Okay, when we fail this, we can laugh about it. Yep, we failed. So, <clears throat> basic action targeting the attacker. Can I end my act immediately? Well, the Gorn missed me too, so fair is fair. We got hit once though, have no evasion. One damage to the leg. Spilt milk. We walk away. Actually, we walk away. Uh, one, two, three, four. Here. And then we get knocked back five. Oh, you know what? One, two, three, four, five. Then we get knocked back this way. I can't get into his blind spot, though. That's fine. We'll be over there. Uh, next turn happens. This happens. No one gets hit. Silly monster keeps standing on his hind legs. Like, what's wrong with it, man? It's wrong. All right, Balthazar... Oh yeah, no, I should wait until after, so I don't have to pick my guy up. We'll just end the turn. Rear up happens first, and then the knockback saves me. This way I don't have to stand up from the knockdown. And we want the guarantee. Horse on a crit. I missed. We get knocked back from stomping. Uh, next turn, rear up. Now we're in the blind spot. No, wait, we're waiting, we're waiting. See, now, Kron, you may as well make it happen, because if it doesn't happen, we just do this ad infinitum until it happens. So we're skipping the turn. He does rear up from face down, so he's standing on his hind legs. Now we go in. We, uh... Finally get a goddamn hit. By the way, when I hit this pillar, does it just stop me? It does just stop me, right? not like the uh, stone pillars well death blow but this isn't the death blow the opportunity we failed to wound anyway we get knocked back five we end the turn he comes crashing down we end the turn he stands back up Balthazar goes in Balthazar swings Balthazar hits active thyroid we don't have that <laughs> We fail. <laughs> Balthazar gets knocked back because of Thunderfoot. We end the turn. Gorham comes crashing down. We end the turn. Gorham stands back up. Balthazar goes back in. Jesus fucking Christ. Just let it end. Balthazar goes there. This dice is cursed. I'm deleting it, man. I can't believe we rolled that many fours specifically on the dice. Doesn't even make sense how that happens. 
Anyway, Gorm comes crashing down. We skip the turn. Gorm stands back up. We go in. We roll a die. We miss. We go here. Gorm, uh, we end the turn. Gorm comes down. End the turn. Gorm goes up. <laughs> okay. That was our roll, so we went in, we got, we missed, we, 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 we just, you know, you know what's happening. You, you guys see what's happening. I don't have to explain it. Gorm comes down. This should be in a discard now. Gorm comes down. Next turn, Gorm goes up. We go in. We miss. This dice is worse than the other dice. We get knocked back as a Thunderfoot. I'm glad this doesn't knock us down, man. It's so good. Next turn. Gorm comes down. Next turn. Gorm comes back up. Anybody keeping track of how long this is taking to succeed? It's not like an impossibly low odd of hitting or wounding. Seven is perfectly reasonable, I think. This is... I hope we fail this. Thank you. There's no resource there. Uh, we get knocked back. Next turn, Gorm comes down. Next turn, Gorm goes up. We go in. We roll the dice. Another perfect hit. We don't want this one either, but... Six fails. We need a seven. Six is only 12 damage. Uh, Gorm comes down after the next turn, and then next turn Gorm goes up, and then we go in, and then we swing, and we miss, and then next turn Gorm goes down, next turn Gorm goes up, and then we swing. Okay, so we hit on this swing. God damn it. God damn it, I critted it. Gorm's knocked down. Uh, this is gone. This is here. I suppose we should just go for a kill. So Faust will simply activate the trap for us to take that. Let's have Faust facing left so that uh, Balthazar can knock and knock down. Now nah, let's have Faust up, then these three get knocked down. Because we're going to absolutely hit the trap when we're hitting on threes, and I have to roll three additional dice on top of that because of fucking legendary lungs. Not that I'm complaining, you know, legendary lungs is fun. Hmm, six cards. Let's just do this. Alright, the trap is in here somewhere. Oh, there it is. It is the first card. <laughs> Alright, Gorm gets up. Gorm will move. We'll have him move one left. He headbutts our guy. We take a head damage. He turns to face the most survivors. Teal, white, and purple take a brain damage and are knocked down. Where is... Oh, did I do survival? My bad. Hold up. My bad. They do not have 1,000 survival. They have zero survival. <laughs> I think they had one survival, actually. No, they had zero. I had to use it to dodge. I think they had zero. I didn't realize I upped their survival limit. You guys probably laughed about that one. I fix, I fix, I fix. Should I do trip formation on this guy just for the hell of it? Costs an action though, right? Yeah, I think we were at zero, because if I just kept upping it by 10 per, I would have had like a one remainer or something there. Anyway. Knock down, knock down, knock down. Ninian will get in the blind spot and win the day. Before Thunderfoot becomes a card. I believe in you, Ninian. So, this crit farming on 7s, the odds sound good statistically, but 
in actuality, it's just not that good. It's just not working out. I f oh, I fell over <laughs> to an eight because of the lag. I don't know. We kill the Gorm. Oh, he's not dead yet, actually. We don't kill the Gorm. We, we wounded Thunderfoot off the stack. Brown has survival. I search. Maybe we hit death below the cow. Six and blind spot does hit. Swinging jowls. Crit? Crit on the way out, please? That's a failure. Alright, well. Gorm goes. Gorm does basic action. Closest threat facing in range is no one. Closest survivor in field of view is no one. He will illuminate. I won't take out the token. There's no way he survives. I'm gonna have Faust go first and just walk away. Like a boss. Balthazar, would you like to finish what you started? Balthazar? Shaking my head, man. Shaking my head. Alright, Ninian. Ninian, shaking my head, man. Shaking my head. Alright, we have one hit. We could get another kidney. Seven does wound. Seven plus two on the weapon is nine. Plus two on Ninian is eleven. Now it's over. God damn, what a fucking pain in the ass. These Gorms have been nothing but trouble. Trouble, trouble for the settlement. That's why we must continue to hunt them. Cull their numbers so that they do not give us more trouble down the road. I can't believe how many fours, threes, and ones we rolled. We couldn't even throw in a two. Just four threes and ones constantly. <laughs> All right, we can't complain. Nobody died, right? Another perfect hide. Lantern is nice. We needed that scrap. Uh, let's put this over there. Please. Oh, we got a brain. Please. <gasps> All right, Kron, you're all right. Thank you. I think that I think getting the handed skull was deserved considering you know how many times we've killed this thing by now and the bullshit you just put us through. <laughs> we we really should be coming out a little better than that with a seven, the crit. I think I think the odds are in my favor. I don't know, maybe I'm overestimating the actual mathematics, but we can finally complete the Gorm armor just in time for the guy to uh, do his thing. The, this level two king's man. All right, show down, clean up. One hunt XP, one weapon, proficiency. Ninian is age two. Uh, this person gains 200 XP. Right, they're not going to complete that, but maybe they can have a child and pass that on if we get that. Three more safe hunts with Faust, and we will master Axe for all to benefit. Okay. Five endeavors, because we have cooking and four returning survivors. One matchmaker is active. So I need to remember that. It is Lantern Year 9. Nothing's happening. We just have to depart to fight the fucking Kingsman level 2. So that's depressing. Settlement event as well. The Dark Dentist. Cloaked woman enters the settlement. All that can be seen beneath her hood is the sparkle of perfect teeth. She offers to improve the survivors if they are brave enough. I don't have a sh don't I have a shattered jaw person? I 
Where did they die? They died. Everybody dies. I can never get some cool characters with character development that stick around for a while. I always just fucking get offed instantly. Okay. One of these days I'll go for that metal maw on a character, but we don't really have iron right now. First things first, stout hide, handed skull. One gourmet mask. If your courage is higher than monster level, ignore intimidate actions, but we have to attach blue and green to it. Tis nice, yes, tis nice. And with that, we have completed the armor set. Now we need to figure out how to puzzle it all together. We'll keep this in storage. So I'm not sure what a blue facing up is. Uh, besides raw hide, but we can't use that. Blue facing up is... Or blue facing down, so we need a Gorn or armor spikes. Stout vertebrae I don't have. <laughs> I was wondering, what song is this? And I was like, oh yeah, this is fucking Tiger X theme. Alright. Uh, so I don't really have any blue facing ups or red facing or green green facing ups green facing up We can get I just have to make a leather crafter, which is next on my to-do list uh, We'll make a leather crafter I believe it's an organ Three hide organ leather worker. So we're finally getting into the mid tier here. Armor wise. Gorm weapons are so nice. They're basically a weapon crafter tier by themselves, in my opinion. Alright, we can now do some leather making. Uh, leather bone hide. I might make a round leather shield. That's a green facing up. That works well with gourmet masks. Speaking of which, this is the wrong deck. Gorm armor. Alright. Have one all hit locations when you suffer more than one severe injury from an attack, ignore the second severe injury. But only the second specifically. And now we just need to regen see, but I gotta kill level three Gorm for that. We we need to complete a red somehow. So the way I'm looking at it. We don't want uh, rib blade plus bandages to function here, but we do want this on our Gorm user. Um, I will think. I, I don't think Gorm armor can afford to have. Uh, what's it called? Yeah, we we can stay. Nah, we definitely want we definitely want to riot mace it up. The grand weapon doesn't matter. What 
What is a blue facing down besides those two things? Leather cross. I think I'm gonna make a scavenger kit. We have a perfect hide, we have a scrap. So I would like to get some extra resources going after each hunt. Uh, so scavenger kit. I don't usually get to play with this thing. Now we have a green facing down. So when we defeat a monster, gain either one random basic resource or one random monster resource from that monster's resource deck. I don't think we're going to beat the level 2 king's man. We're going to try. And then if I want the... I'm tempted to make an extra shield. Uh, uh, a leather shield. Because I could get... Oh, all right. Hmm. Instead of this, it's too soon for this. Instead of the scavenger kit, we could turn this into leather and make the leather mask. And then I can use a bone for the leather cuirass. Or I could do a leather bone hide. Hmm. Let me get my scrap and perfect hide back. We can make three leather. And leather counts as hide. So we could do the mask. We could do... A first aid kit. We could do a first aid kit instead. Which is actually a lot better than the other thing. This first aid kit gives you three survival on arrival. It does count as heavy though. So we can do a leather mask and then if I do those two things I can't make the shield though. And we're fighting a king's man. Two characters are going to be gimped without the shield. So instead of the leather mask, what I could do is make the shield. So we're not using the jiggling lard. Alright, so we'll, we'll do this. This will become leather, this will become leather. And then we'll do hide leather bone for our shield. Considering our opponent. Shield gives you one armor all around anyway. And it's just generally really good to have. And then we'll get a first aid kit as well. Now. What I would like to do is activate the gourmet suit if possible so the question is how do we do it intuitively i think we simply make use of the dagger we can't ignore monster intimidate actions doing this But we could do this to have a red, blue, and green. Well, we have three blues. So guard is active. We do not have two greens, so we can't guard without spending survival. If we could guard without spending survival, that would be insane. I'd have to give up the lucky charm, though. We don't really need the lucky charm in the next encounter. So we could still have this as a thing here. This 
scrap sword can be on that person. We don't need the bone axe since we're not going out for a hunt. We can then try to hmm. I need the knuckle shield for the red. I was wondering if I could get three green on this character as well. I'm gonna have to play with this for a while. Do we want two hyper vulnerable characters? <laughs> I am going to be taking newer kids that we have. I'll keep messing with this in a minute. Let's continue. Uh, the next thing we want to do is... Uh, special Innovate. Gain the next Gormkaimi innovation. We're not innovating normally this lantern year. So, Gorn Brain plus a resource of the strange kind. And an innovation or endeavor, right? Yeah. We can get Albedo. So Albedo, add Albedo Consequence to the deck, Citronas, spend two Endeavors once this Lantern you roll 1d10, uh, 1 to 2 we don't like, 3 to 9 Gets us an extra Gorm Brain, but it costs four organs. And ten plus, returning survivors change one negative attribute modifier of their choice to zero. Elixir Restoration is crazy. But of course, there's a 10% chance you hit that ever, so we don't want it for that. We're gonna Matchmaker. Hopefully we get kids. Uh, we're gonna do Isengard and Betty. Cause we still can't pass on stuff. All right, seven, the 10 survival for Isengard and Betty. We get a healthy newborn baby who may just go out in the combat. We have one Endeavor left. I could give somebody Rhythm Chaser so there's an extra evasion out and about. Hey, you know what? They don't have blue anymore. Or guard. Technically, they do if we take Balthazar out. They have blue. Certainly don't make it easy.
I could try to get like a wisdom potion or something. Wisdom potion is blue, right? That doesn't help. Wisdom Potion is quite powerful, and we have, now that we have two Gormkaimi, so it's three D10s, we have a decent chance of getting that. It was Steadfast, too. When you ignore a hit with block, gain plus one strength token, when you knock down these all the plus one strength. Yeah, that's a good one, too. And that is a red up, which would help with the shield, because then I don't have to carry the dagger. I'd have to sack the Jiggling Lord, but we can always get another Jiggling Lord, right? I don't need to hoard it for now. Let's try our luck at a potion. I'm gonna spend two organs. We will 3d10. Because we have two... things. Let's see what potion we get. It might change our fate. 369. That's 8. 368. I think it's another healing potion, right? Yeah, it's another healing potion. Another healing potion. Alright, well, I gambled. Oh, where'd my thing go? I gambled. We got a healing pot. They're not going out to hunt, obviously. They Balthazar, we might just sack Balthazar here for just sacking him because I don't really care. We can always get another special child. They're not going out to hunt. This person's not either. Which means we have uh, Johnny can't go out unless my last endeavor cures fear of the dark. We can send Isengard. Get a new character for Isengard here. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, you were Faust. You are Ninian. You are Baxter. And you are Balthazar's currently still in the lineup here. These are for the other two. Whoever that is and whoever this is. Two unnamed females. And we have plenty of males staying behind, so that's fine. We'll take... Um... Vivian, 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 and Zar Zarla. All right, welcome to the party, Scrubs. That are gonna die and turn, or or maybe turn into king's mans. We'll see. So the main thing I want to do is have an as much of a fighting chance from this person as possible.
We do get the luck token still because we have two blue just because of our character affinity. This is still two evasion. Would I prefer having some additional evasion? We'll have a tactics card. We're very, very unprepared for this. I'm gonna put the shield on a rib blade user because I think the rib blade will be more useful than the scrap sword at bypassing the level two Kingsman. 16 toughness, 12 in the blind spot. We have to fight in the blind spot to actually cause damage here. So we can guard without spending survival, which is a pretty big deal. And if we can get it the basic action twice, that's a pretty big deal too. Um... If I forego this first aid kit on that guy, put it on this guy instead. We have, we have exactly one bone. I can't make a rawhide drum. If I could at least get a green on this person, then we would have the perfect hit at sharpens back then, at least, and that could be relevant. But two green on Gourmet Sleeve seems very useful. And the only way I can make two green is if they have the first aid kit. I can give bandage to this person so they can get the perfect hit bonus. At least. And then we, so we have two highly vulnerable survivors and two well off survivors <laughs> that are uh, all gonna die, likely. That's okay. I think we will with this party here. The only thing I don't like about it is the fact that I mean, there's a lot I don't like about it. I really wish I could complete this gourmet mask for starters. It would be useful. I don't know if it's necessary. But it would be useful. I wish someone else could use the acid teeth dagger. This is... The guy is vulnerable to daggers. Plus three strength on this thing, so it hits on a five. And when we're trying to beat 12 armor... Uh, it's wounding on sevens in the blind spot. Plus, it's perfect hits automatically wound. That's the thing that I hate the most. But I have nothing else that aims up or that aims right. Because <laughs> I have this thing aiming left and the Gax aims left. Ugh, what direction does the other Gax aim? It's left and up. That's the advantage of this one, is it's an up red. 
Oh well, what can you do? I think this is the group that we will roll with. Now, I'm not going to play it right now. We will play it next time. Did I feel up the playing? Because I'm getting a little tired. But thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed the madness. Uh, I have one more endeavor to spend, right? Rhythm Chaser would make this person have three evasion. One evasion on the Gorm person could be game changer. We don't need lore epilepsy. These two, you know, they're fucked out of luck anyway. I think we'll take a rhythm chaser and put it on. We'll go all in on the dodge tank idea, so instead of getting hit on fours, we'll have to tank the hits. And then we'll hopefully dodge. Dodging on sixes, you know, the way the monster rolls, he's gonna nail my ass anyway, but we shall give rhythm chaser to this kiddo. This kiddo is likely going to last longer anyway. I think that's what we do. Drum beats. Not worried about weapon proficiencies at all. Uh, yeah, no, I'll leave this person at grand weapon, but I'm not too worried about it. Okay. We're super unprepared for this fight. Usually I like to have three armor sets by now, but I just did not. Going for the Gorm took a lot out of us. Now I may as well just go straight into the leather. Since we've completed all the Gorm things that I wanted, for the most part. Uh, besides Black Sword. Maybe we'll farm a different monster next time. We could do like a level 2 antelope or something. We don't have dash yet. Oh, I'd have to surge like crazy on a level 2 antelope. And a level 2 lion. Both of them would be bad. We don't have dash. We do not have the dash. I don't think we stick with level 1 Gorm though. We could do level 1 Phoenix hunting. Maybe we should work on Phoenix stuff. I'd rather have a full leather armor set before fighting the Phoenix. What provides the most leather? It's Lion. Maybe we'll fight a level 2 Gorm. Nah, I should, I should take it easy. We don't want to risk people dying, right? We, we want to finish Fist and Tooth, Axe, and whoever's got the third highest. I don't mind playing it safe. I guess it's Fist and Tooth and Axe. Everyone else keeps getting kind of killed off when they get started <laughs> on working on weapon level. I'll think about it. I'm not sure what we want to hunt afterwards. Let me look at the, uh... Third Circle doesn't have anything that I really need for this playthrough, right? I mean, it does. If we want to do cooking for permanent evasion on our final character, we're gonna have to fight these things and hopefully get some beef steak in the campus. The Plumery... We could go in for a bow person. And Sonic Tomahawks, I believe, were buffed there for doing axe, and we want to upgrade from Greater Gax. So it's Sonic Tomahawk. Three dice, five plus the hit, six damage. Yeah, on a perfect hit, make one additional attack roll. Gain Savage and Paired if you have the double red blue. I'm 
But if we're really going for an end game axe, we just want to get the iron smith, blacksmith. Because Lantern Glaive counts as both Spear and Axe With Sharp You know, I keep forgetting that I have Axe specialization on my guy Anyway, I'm gonna think about what we want to do next we're just entering the mid game so we we have time to hunt stuff but i think finishing up my final armor sets is what we want to focus on for sure probably just focus on making a leather armor and getting paint eventually a level two is so dangerous though like these guys will be fine Anyway, I'm going to head out. I've done enough rambling. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.